to future nurses for discussions on policies, guidelines, and laws in nursing informatics. So when I talk about nursing informatics, we do not just implement nursing informatics. There are laws and guidelines from the government that could affect nursing informatics. And we will be tackling some of those today. Okay? So we expect that by the end of this lesson, we will be able to describe briefly the intellectual property law, the copyright law, understand and explain the privacy of the personal and public based on the data privacy app, and then determine and apply different rules and guidelines. So basically, the two major laws that we'll be talking about is the copyright law, intellectual property law, they go hand in hand, and then the second is your data privacy app. These are the important laws that we need to remember as healthcare professionals. So take note, this is not applicable to nurses, this is applicable to healthcare professionals. Okay? Now, let's talk about the intellectual property. Guys, when you talk about the intellectual property, your intellectual property would refer to the creation of the mind. That's why it's referred to as intellectual, because it's any creation of the mind that would include inventions, literary, artistic work, design, symbol, names, images, news, and commerce. Now, what do we mean by intellectual property? For example, if I would develop a new technology, I as a nurse, for example, would make a new technology that will be able to diagnose cancer. That technology will be under my intellectual property because I'm the one who discovered it. And when I have that intellectual property for that new gadget, for that new equipment or diagnostic test, I am protected by law in terms of patents, copyright, and trademark. So for example, if somebody would want to buy it, if somebody would want to purchase that technology that I just invented, they need to pay me some amount of money because I was the one who developed it. Okay? That is where your intellectual property claims would come in. Now, let's say, for example, that, let's say, for example, there will be a contest. Uh, somebody will be contesting, and then somebody will tell me that, hey, Gilbert, you are not the first one who made it. I was the, actually the first person who discovered it. That is where the intellectual property office would come in to determine if who is the rightful owner of that equipment or that gadget or that discovery. So it enables people to earn recognition or financial benefit from whatever you invent or create. So you might be wondering, is this all about money? No, it's not, it's not all about money, but it's all about the sense of ownership. So remember, if you will develop something like an invention, you are investing time on it. You are investing time. You are also investing resources. And among the resources, money is included. So it is intellectual property that will ensure you or that will assure you that you will be able to get what you deserve. So for example, if you made a song, you compose a lyric of that song, then you place a tune on that song, the intellectual property would be belonging to you unless if you copied it from somebody else. Okay? So for example, if I published a song and then later on, when Lizelle was listening to it, and then Lizelle found out that, oops, parang akin naman yung song na yan. Parang na-share ko yan sa TikTok last year. If Lizelle could prove that, that she did it earlier, pagkatapos ako nag-copy-copy lang, tapos ako yung kumuha ng intellectual property, Lizelle could actually file a legal case against me para makontest niya, uy, sa akin ng kantang yan, hindi yan kay Gilbert. Okay? So there are things like that that is done in court. Now, if you would look at intellectual property, it would balance the interest of the innovators and the wider public interest. So in our case, for example, in the medical field, if somebody is able to create an antibiotic, that, uh, that person, that company is considered to be a developer. That company is considered to be a developer. And what is the advantage of the developer? For example, if company A made antibiotic A, kapag si company B magre-reproduce ng antibiotic A, company B should ask permission from company A. And company B needs to pay company A for that. Okay? There, is a, there is a accompanying fees for that. Kasi nga, si company A ang unang nag-discover ng gamot na yan. 
So it fosters your environment of creativity and innovation. Um, however, I would like to make a side comment on this now. The common hugot kasi of our scientists and our innovators is that medyo mahirap daw mag-claim ng intellectual property and patents here in the Philippines. That's why oftentimes you would hear that the inventor is a Filipino, however, it's discovered in another country. I don't know if you've heard of that, no? May mga discoveries na yung, yung nag-discobre, Pinoy, pero nadiscoverehan siya sa ibang country. Because the tendency of our scientists is to migrate to other countries because it is where the opportunity is. Okay? However, the government is also doing moves towards that. Okay? Such as, for example, your DOST. Your DOST has a program, if I'm not mistaken, is Balik Scientist Program, okay? wherein they tap our Filipino scientists across the globe and then they provide what are their they provide the needs of these scientists so that they can be able to do their work here in the Philippine setting. A good example that I can recall is the laboratory in the University of San Agustin in Iloilo. Okay? Um, knowledge serves me well. There is, a, there is a laboratory there that allows for the development of antibiotics. And one of our global scientists was stopped for that. Um, don't you know that, for example, uh, one of the famous antibiotics uh, was named previously as Ilosone. Allow me to check that. Uh, it's named as Ilosone. Um, Ilosone is an antibiotic that is actually discovered in the soils of Iloilo. That's why it's referred to as Ilosone. So Ilosone, the generic name is that is erythromycin. Okay? You also have penicillin, which uh, they say that the discoverer is actually from Iloilo. Um, so one of the programs right now is that again. There are Balik Scientist Program that allows these scientists to do their work here in the Philippine setting with all the equipment that they need. So again, it fosters an environment of creativity and innovation. Now, something that you need to memorize. Now. As a nurse, there are actually more than more or less 50 laws that you need to familiarize with. And among these laws is your RA 8293. Um, board exam wise, there are there are board exams wherein there are five laws that would come out, and there are also board exams wherein there are no laws coming out. So as early as now, you need to be able to familiarize them. Okay, so you have your RA eighty two ninety three. Your RA eighty two ninety three is your intellectual property code of the Philippines. Why do we have RA eighty two ninety three? It's because of the mandate of the state that intellectual and industrial property system is considered vital for the development of creative activity to facilitate transfer of technology and to attract foreign investment and ensure market access for the products. Okay? That's why we have your RA8293. Now, if you would look at the law, RA8293, it has actually five, five major parts. You have the intellectual property office. So when we say intellectual property office, for example, if I would want to claim intellectual property for a certain um, gadget, certain equipment or invention, that is the office to whom I will be going to seek the intellectual property rights. Then you have the law on patent, the law on trademark, service marks and trade names, and then the law on copyright. So all of these are covered under your intellectual property. The final provisions is a usual part of any law um, that would be talking about uh, the repeal, uh, repealability clause, miscellaneous clauses, and the like. Now, these are the government agencies that are in charge of our intellectual property. So if, uh, you, if you did not yet know, we have Bureau of Patents, we have Bureau of Trademark, Bureau of Legal Affairs, you have your DIT Transfer Bureau. We refer to that one as DIT because it's Documentation, Information, and Technology Bureau. You have your MIS and EDP Bureau. Then you have your Administrative, Financial, and uh, Personal Services Bureau. These are nice for you to know, no? but not really crucial for our practice, but just for you to understand that there are offices that takes care of that. Now, let's talk about the copyright law. No? When I say copyright law, no, copyright law no is the collection of all rights enjoyed by the owner of an artistic or literary work. 
So if you would look at your copyright law, your copyright copyright applies to the artist and to the literary workers. Okay? It's under your intellectual property. But notice earlier that when I talk about intellectual property, it covers arts, it covers inventions, it covers all the discoveries that you can have. But if you would look at copyright law, it's specific among the artist and literary work. Kindly highlight that as your keyword for this. Now, what are considered copyrightable works in the Philippines? Just try to look at the list. Try to look at the list. Books, pamphlet, articles, lectures, addresses, addresses, as in public address, dissertation for oral delivery, drawings, pictorial illustration, cinematographic works. All of those are copyrightable. Now, it goes back to the question, for example, you have your textbook in nursing informatics. Is it okay for us to photocopy the textbook without the permission of the author? Is it okay for us to photocopy the textbook without the written permission of the author and the publisher? Guys, I want to see your chat. Pwede bang gawin yun? Pwede bang gawin? So, no. 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 In the same way, for example, Okay, for example, we are doing photography. No? Alimbawa, sabi nila, Uy, ito, pang-pang, Miss Nursing, ang beauty mo, Miss. So, mag-picture taking tayo, mag-post-post ka somewhere. For example, I am the photographer. It's your picture. Can anybody just grab it on Facebook and then explain? Or, and then caption it as their own picture. Ako yung nag-take ng picture. Picture ni Miss A, halimbawa. Pagkatapos na-share ko sa Facebook, Okay lang ba na i-copy mo yon from my Facebook page and then share it to your own? Hindi rin pwede. That's why if you can notice, professional photographers would actually have watermark on the photos that they have taken. Okay? That's why if you would want to share pictures, no? Alimbawa, gusto ko mag-share ng picture. The best thing that you can do is do not copy and then post it on your wall. Instead, share it directly from the site of the owner. Okay, share it directly from the site of the owner. Now, here's another common pitfall. Am I allowed to download videos from YouTube? Am I allowed to download videos from YouTube and then save it in my computer? Pwede ba akong mag-download ng video sa YouTube and then isave ko sa computer ko? Okay, you are not allowed. Okay, you are not allowed. So, Diba? That's why I'm telling you that if you need to download lectures from YouTube, you can press the download button on the YouTube application itself. Okay? Do not download it using third-party softwares or third-party websites. Sa mga nagda-download sa YouTube, diba na notice nyo, pupunta pa kayo ng another link to download the YouTube? Okay? Because that is not considered to be legal. Okay? It's not considered to be legal. Now, how about this one? No? May mga websites, di ba? Kung saan yung mga, yung mga movies, kapag bagong labas lang yung movies, medyo poor quality pa. Pagkatapos, kapag medyo matagal-tagal na, nag high quality na rin. Is it legal? Is it legal to post movies online? Okay? Pwede ba yun? Halimbawa, sasabihin ko, Oy, Angel, okay? or, or, or Michael, let's watch a movie. May nakuha akong copy. Is it okay that I will be sharing it to everybody? Okay? You are also not allowed to do that. And all of that, dear students, is covered by the copyright law. Okay? So please be reminded of that. In your case, since we are on, um, we are soon to be licensed professionals, it could cost your license actually. Okay? If you are not a licensed professional, so it will be um, damages, you will have fines, and you could have imprisonment. In our case, it's your license plus the damages plus the imprisonment. Uh, so better be careful with those. Now, what are not covered the man? What are not covered by your copyright law? If it's an idea, if it is a procedure or system method, operation, concept, or principle discovery, or mere data, it's not covered by the copyright law. Okay? News of the day or press data is not covered by the copyright law. Official text of the Office of the President, Office of the Congress, Office of the Senate, anything of legal nature is not covered by copyright law. That should be statutes, 
rules, regulations, speeches, lectures, sermons, address, read, or rendered in courts of justice. That's the important part here. Once plus kasi, once that is rendered, once it is read in the court of justice, it is already considered part of the document of the court, and that document of the court can actually be published. If you can see, if you would look at, um, if you would look at uh, the internet, you would see court decisions. You would see court decisions that are published in the internet. If you have time, you try to search about starry diseases. Okay? Starry diseases. Which means that the previous decisions of the court would carry over. Okay? So kung ano yung na-decisionan, halimbawa, may na-decisionan yung Supreme Court. Any decision of the Supreme Court right now would apply already to the future cases without the need for the Supreme Court to decide over it again. Okay? That's your starry diseases. Okay? So you will see there um, court decisions and it will be composed of a very long transcript of what transpired during the hearing. You will be able to see that. And that is also the opportunity for you to see how creative your chief justice and your associate justice is on creating their reasons as to why they came up with that decision. Okay? That's on the side now in case you would want to learn on that. Is copyright registration necessary? Okay, is it really necessary to protect artistic or literary work? The best answer for here is it is highly recommended. It is highly recommended, but not necessary. Okay? Again, huh? the question is, is copyright registration necessary to protect artistic or literary work? It is highly recommended, but it is not really necessary. Ibig sabihin, tulad ng example ko kanina, if Lizelle was the one who made the song first, the copyright ownership would actually belong to Lizelle even if she applied for copyright or not. Siya po yung legal owner kasi siya nga po yung naunang kumanta nun. Tapos ako na nag-copy at saka nagkunwari, ako yung owner, pwede po akong makulong for that. Okay? If that's the case that happened. So, is it, is it uh, really necessary Hindi po siya kailangan because copyrightable works are protected from the moment that they are created. However, if you know that your copyright work would entail monetary benefit at saka malaking pera later on, that is wise for you to apply for copyright. Okay? It's wise for you to apply for copyright. Okay? Mahirap mag-contest ng copyright later on kapag may monetary claims na siya because there will be a lot of parties which will be interested. Especially if you are on software development, who knows, no? Baka you will become nurse informaticist, okay? a full-blown nurse informaticist who would develop software for the hospitals. So you need to be careful of your copyright claims. Okay? Now, who can apply for copyright registration? It is the owner of the work or his or her assignees or successor in interest has the right to apply for a copyright registration. So, nimbawa sa example ko ulit, if Lizelle was the one who made the song first, it should be Lizelle who should be able to apply for copyright for that. Okay? Wala nang iba. Okay? Or, kapag may na-appoint siya, for example, Lizelle would appoint the publisher to apply for the copyright, it's okay. And then, if Lizelle appointed successor in interest in her behalf, it's okay. So, remember, ha, ito lang po yung tatlo ang pwede makapag-apply ng copyright. Okay? For a certain um discovery for that matter. Okay? Now, next, who are considered owners of the copyrightable work? Sino po yung owners? Una, obviously, ang author. Okay? Kung sino yung nagsunat ng libro, edi owner siya. Okay? Owner siya. Okay? If you would want to know about copyright, uh, are you familiar with uh, J.K. Rowling's? Ano nga ba yung sinulat, guys, ni J.K. Rowling's? Are you still familiar with her? Yes? Ano daw? Tama ba? Rowling's? Okay. So, yeah. J.K. Rowling's uh, wrote Harry Potter. Okay? Try to look at the, the struggle that she had with copyright. Huh? Try to look at the struggle that she had with copyright. Especially with the first books of Harry Potter. Okay? Why? Anong spelling yan? <laughs> okay? So, author of the work. So, the author of the work is considered to be the owner of the copyrightable work. And then, how about its joint ownership? 
Halimbawa, dalawa tayo yung author. So, sino po yung author? Tayong dalawa because we are co-authors. Or for example, if there are three chapters on the book, no? Halimbawa, we made a book tapos three chapters siya. Kapag yung chapter one nakapangalan sa akin, ako talaga yung owner ng chapter one. So, by right, akong gamitin yan at i-publish somewhere else. So now, pag ikaw yung owner ng chapter 2, edi ikaw yung owner ng chapter 2. Okay? Author of which part of the book as long as it has been clearly specified if who made that part. How about naman if employed ka? Let's say, for example, in my case, no, if I am employed in company A, it will be um, company A who will be considered the owner if if it is part of my regular duties or agreed upon. Halimbawa, I am hired as an information technologist of the informatics department. Pagkatapos, I was assigned to develop a software. The ownership of that software would belong to the company because I was hired for that. Pero, for example, I am a nurse in the company, di ba? Nurse ako sa isang kumpanya. Pagkatapos, trip ko lang na during break time, magde-develop ako ng software para matulungan yung kumpanya ko. Tapos, once na-develop ko ang software na yan, it is my own ownership because it is not part of my job description. It is not part of my job description. Kumbaga, extra kong ginawa yan. So, the ownership would belong to me as an employee. Okay? But, for example, ginawa mo nga mo during break time, tapos nakita ng president mo, tapos sinabi, Uy, maganda yung ginagawa mo. Let's agree that that will be company owners, company owned. Kami yung mag-finance ng expenses mo, basta kapag matapos mo yan, owned ng company yan. In that case, that ownership is transferred to the employer. Okay? In that case, the ownership is transferred to the employer. Now, let's take an example. If I, if you were hired as a scientist, no? if you were hired as a scientist by company A to develop an antibiotic, who would own the copyright for that antibiotic? Ay, sorry, sorry. When you talk about antibiotic, it's based on patents. No? Ah, sige. I iba ito yung example. Ha? Let's say you were hired by company A to develop the song. You were hired by company A to develop a song for the company. Alimbawa daw sabi, i-revise mo daw yung IDC him or baka i-revise mo yung company kung ano man yung mga him him ng company nila. Who will be the owner of that him? Will it be you as the employer, employee or will it be the employer? If you are hired by a company to develop a him or a song for that company, who will be the owner of that song? Will it be you who develop it or will it be the company? Sige na. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it will be the employer, it will be the company. Eh? So again, I would like to re-emphasize that if you were hired for that, if your work entails you to do that, you are, uh, it is the employer or the company that is considered to be uh, the owner of which. Okay? Now, pag commission demand, okay, because for the commissioned work, for example, you were commissioned by somebody, no? Okay, so uh, if it's the commission to somebody, so it can be owned by the one who commissioned with the author or the creator. So the ownership class would belong to the one who commissioned it plus the author. And then the copyright class would belong to the author or the creator. Somebody mentioned, sir, nagbibigay naman sila ng copyright rights. Yes, um, actually the main message here is that you just need to be aware legally of your copyright before you enter into an agreement. No? So, halimbawa, kahit company yung own, or kahit company yung owner, pwede naman kayong mag-agree ng company beforehand at saka sabihin na, Sir, hindi ko po mag-aalaw na kayo lang po yung mag-own. Dapat po joint ownership po tayo. Pwede po kayong mag-agree na gano'n. Okay? And then the lawyer, through the judge, or through the court, would be helping you to determine what is most appropriate. Or could include the following people. So that would be the producer, the author of the scenario, the music composer, the film director, and author of the work adapted. That's why if you would look at it, if you would want to um, access a movie, let's say, for example, you would want to have an evaluation copy of the movie 
or if you would want the movie to be um, televised or viewed in a private cinema, you need to acquire the copyright or you need to acquire, I mean, permission from these authors or from these people. Um, however, no, if you can notice, there are a lot of piracy concerns when it comes to your movie. There are a lot of pirated CDs and DVDs where in, um, they are spreading through the market. And even in the internet, there are illegal accesses to this movie. So since we are learning this, please um, take note that this access is considered to be illegal and they are not supposed to be shared to others. No? So please do not tolerate those practices. Now, the next part here is how about letters and private communications? If you would look at this, guys, the letters and private communications are owned by the person to whom they are addressed. So again, class, they are owned by the person to whom they are addressed and delivered, but it cannot be published without the consent of the writer for his, for, or his heirs. Now, what do we mean by that? For example, if I will send a love letter to somebody, and then after Pilabika years, no? after how many years, um, there was a breakup that happened, okay? that letter could not be publicized without my permission. Okay? Although the law was clear that it belongs to the one to whom it is sent, kung kanino siya pinadala, sa kanya yung ownership. However, it could not be published without the permission of somebody else or the one who wrote the letter. Now, in that case, for example, if we have a private conversation, or no, if you're having chats, let's say, for example, Messenger chat, can you screenshot our messages in Messenger and then share it to the public without my knowledge. Can we do that? Can we do that? <coughs> na halimbawa, nag nag message tayo, nag uusap tayo sa messenger. Pagkatapos, you you did not like the way I converse. Tapos na screenshot mo siya. Tapos isi send mo to public. Is it possible for you to do that legally? Are you allowed to do screenshots? So please be reminded that you are not. Okay, please be reminded that you are not. Why are you strongly reminded on this? Na? Because we are also aware of the social media issues. If you can see in the social media, there's really a lot, there's really many people who are sharing screenshots, di ba? Okay, not only yung mga sikat, hindi lang yung mga artista, pero kahit yung mga tao na, halimbawa, mga student nurses, or for example, even educators, even nurses, Okay, and even professionals who are sharing screenshots. So please take note that sharing of screenshots may um is actually considered illegal without the permission of the one um to whom you are messaging. So alimbawa, no, for example, nag-uusap kami ni Chris na pagkatapos na screenshot ko yung message. And then for example, I I told Chris na, Chris na, I will be sharing this to James. And then it turned out that I shared it on my Facebook account. Krishna can actually sue me and Krishna can actually pursue legal action. Kahit nagbigay siya ng permission na pwede ko siyang i-share kay James, ang permission niya is hanggang sa permission lang na i-share kay James. Hindi siya nagbigay ng permission na i-share ko siya in public. So for that purpose, Krishna could file legal action. Now, in the same way, for example, now we have screenshots in our um conversations there, group group chats uh let's say for example you as a student and i as your teacher you are not supposed to share those screenshots in public or else legal action can be taken eh, sir papano kapag magshi-share ako ng screenshot eh pag nag-share ka talaga ng screenshot kasi parang hindi mo talaga mapigilan yung self mo you need to ask the permission of everybody in the gc tapos here comes naman other people who will say sir papano kung nabura ko na naman yung pangalan. Okay, kung nabura mo yung pangalan, just make sure that the message is not identifiable. Take note that the message could not only be identified by the name itself. For example, if a student nurse would post in the social media, I hate my teacher in medical surgical nursing. He is so, um, he is so, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay? Now, ang tanong, walang pangalan, di ba? Walang pangalan. Pero ang tanong, sino yung nagtuturo ng medical surgical nursing? Sino yung he that you mean in medical surgical nursing? Those words could actually help identify the individual who is involved. Okay? So please correct the notion na kapag walang pangalan, okay na. 
hindi siya okay if there are identifiers. Okay? If there are identifiers, it's still as good as if you named the individual. Okay? So please be careful. That's why um the wise etiquette no, the wise etiquette for you to practice is do not post anything without the permission of the person. And again, do not post anything when you are galit, okay? when you are very sad, when you are depressed. Try to refrain from posting anything or else you might encounter legal sanctions for that matter. Okay? I hope I'm making that clear. Now, just as a recap, what is your intellectual property law? Um, what's that? Republic Act. Uh, yes, can I see the chats on that? For numbers, what's your Republic Act for your intellectual property law? Okay. Sige nga. <laughs> Wala nang may nakaremember. Oy, ano yung intellectual property law of the Philippines? Republic Act? Okay, so you have your Republic Act 8293. Okay, you have your Republic Act 8293. Okay, so kindly remember that. Now, allow me to have an introduction on the Data Privacy Act. Okay, so Data Privacy Act has been on place way back in 2012. No? So why do we need data privacy? Actually, one of the triggers of data privacy is the healthcare industry. Okay, one of the major triggers of data privacy is the healthcare industry. Why the healthcare industry? Because there are a lot of data collected in the healthcare industry. Okay, um, and a lot of this data could be harmful. Okay, a lot of this data can be harmful if you are unable to protect it properly. So, uh, maybe the first question that you need to ask yourself is, who stores data about you? Okay, who stores data about you? Sige nga, can you answer? Can you answer that question? Who do you think stores data about you? Sige, anong mga institusyon, anong mga tao, anong mga website ang alam mo that stores data about you? Anybody? Sige na, random idea. Okay. Sige na, sino yung nag, who stores data about you? A very good example is the school. The school stores data about you. Okay? Facebook, yes. PSA is storing data about us. The bank is storing data about us. What else? What else? Sige na. Now with the SIM card registration law. Can the telephone company already store data about us? Yes, they are storing data about us. Yes, the government sector is also storing data about us. And if, for example, you will visit a page, no? if you will visit a Facebook page or if you will visit Shopee, you will visit any other website in the internet, are they storing data also about us? Are they storing data about us? Yes, no? Yes, they are. So if you would look at it, a lot of people, a lot of sectors, a lot of companies, a lot of websites are actually storing data about us. That's why Data Privacy Act is, has a very important role in our lives. No? Why? Because there could be intrusive acts. And intrusive act is collecting and storing unnecessary personal data. For example, if I will go to the hospital... If I will go to the hospital, you don't need to, to ask for my bank statement. You don't need to know if how much is the content of my bank account. Because after all, whether I have a bank account or not, I should be able to avail of healthcare services. Okay? It's considered to be unnecessary data. Or for example, if you will go to a telephone company, okay, if you will go to the telephone company and then they will ask you, What's the name of your girlfriend? Where is your girlfriend living? What is the what is the address of your girlfriend? What is the work of your father's uh, of your girlfriend's father? What's the work of your girlfriend's mother? Come to think of it, are those data important for you to get a cellular line? So the answer is no, diba? It's considered to be unnecessary data already. Or, for example, if you will be going to school, if you will be going to school, let's say a private school, and then I will be asking you, how many televisions do you have at home? How many doors does your home has? How many um, internet connections do you have? Are those data? Are those data necessary? 
options. Okay. Are those data necessary for you to be able to enroll to school? It's not. So it's considered to be already unnecessary data by which your Data Privacy Act actually protects us from the collection of unnecessary data. That's why if you are in the hospital, you need to be careful and you need to be sensitive. For example, if you encountered black individuals, no? let's say, for example, especially coming from the western side of the world, pagkatapos tinanong mo siya, Sir, may I know what is your ethnic group or what is your race? You need to be careful because they might answer you, why do you want to know? Is it because that I am black, I will not be able to receive care or the proper care? Okay? Sometimes, asking this information is already not necessary. And asking this information might actually entail other judgments. Or halimbawa, ini-interview kita, no? Ini-interview kita for a job. Tapos tatanungin kita, bakla ka ba? Are you lesbian? Now, is it necessary for me to know that you are gay or lesbian before you could become a nurse in my hospital? Is it necessary for me to know that? It's not. Okay? It's not. By Data Privacy Act, these questions, these questions are actually considered to be unnecessary. Okay? Or, pwede po kayong makonstrue that you are discriminating individuals. Let's say, for example, you're applying for a job and then you are asked, have you had sex? Are you still a virgin? Are those questions relevant to the job? Hindi. So are we supposed to ask those questions? Hindi. Okay? In the same way, for example, you can't ask the individual, especially here in the setting in the Philippines, I could not um, ask an individual and then say, are you HIV positive? Hindi. Okay? HIV positive should be disclosed by the person itself, himself or herself. The company has no right no, to legally oblige you. Unless if you're applying abroad where different laws apply. Okay? Strict tayo dito sa HIV because now of the discrimination. Now, disclosing data to individuals or organization that do not have genuine need for it. So, alimbawa, no? Alimbawa, for example lang, nag-apply ako ng bank account, for example. Tapos, if this bank will be giving my data to other individuals, tapos sabihin, uy, ayan, mga customer namin, contact nyo. Okay? Bibili kami ng bulaklak. Bibili yan ng bulaklak. Hindi po yan pwede because the information that I have shared is for the bank alone and not for other companies. And then using information for something other than the original purpose could also be considered intrusive. Okay? Halimbawa, you were admitted in the hospital and I would ask you, Sir, me, I know your religion. Tapos nagtanong ka, bakit kailangan mong malaman yung religion ko? Sir, for dietary considerations. Because if you are Muslim, we would respect and we would inform the dietary department na dapat walang mga pork products, dapat mga halal products nang ibibigay namin. Now, for example, kapag pinablish ko or kapag nilagay ko sa front ng chart, this patient is religion A. Ito yung religion niya. Okay? For what purpose? Bakit ko ibibigay sa chart or bakit ko ilalagay sa chart na yan yung religion niya? Wala namang dahilan, di ba? So if that's it, you're using it for other intrusive matters. No? You are not using it for the purpose that you have said it. Pag sinabi ko, for example, na sir, kapag Muslim ka, i-inform ko yung dietary department. Dapat yung dietary department lang yung i-inform ko. At saka yung department that will be affected. Hindi ko po kailangan i-announce sa isang hospital na ito yung religion ng pasyente ko. Okay? One example is Jehovah's Witness. So pag Jehovah's Witness, hindi sila nagpapa-blood transfusion. That's it. Okay? Kaya hindi mo na sinasabi na, ah, Jehovah kasi yan. Baka hindi yan gusto magpagamot. Okay? That's not the point. No? Jehovah's Witnesses, if you have listened to them, they also have the reason why they don't want blood transfusion. And we respect that. And the data about their religion should only be used for that. Wala ka ng ibang gagamitan. Okay? Or else it will be considered an intrusive act already. Now, data is considered to be more valuable than money. I, I think this comment is from one of our officials before. Data is considered to be more valuable than money. Why? If someone has your money, that's it. Yan ay yung nakuha nila. But if people has your data, they may eventually take your money too. 
pag yung tao class may data mo, pwede silang mag-pretend na ikaw. They can take your relationships, they can take your social media, they can take your money, they can take your intellectual property, and a lot more. That's why if you are looking into your social media, be careful about posting your email, your complete birthday, your complete address. Because if you would take note of this, these are personal identifiers. Di ba? Pag nakalimutan mo yung password mo, anong tinatanong? What's your birthday? What's your cell phone number? What's your complete address? What's your first pet? So be careful of posting this data because if you are posting this information, you're actually making it available to the public and giving the public the opportunity to access your account without your permission. And what are the risks? No? What are the risks? So competitors can actually copy your products and then competitors could pirate your employees and it could even mirror your algorithms. Pag sinabi natin mirror the algorithms, parang makakopy nila yung mga algorithms mo and the solutions that you have. Okay? So, now, that being said, what do you think is more valuable? Is it your data or your money? What do you think, guys, is more valuable? Is it your data or your money? So, plus data. Data has a very big importance when it comes to um, uh, value. Okay? So, that's why, no, since we're having this lesson, after this lesson, try to be mindful. Try to look at your social media. Okay? Try to look at your social media. What are you sharing in your social media? Are there personal information or personal identifiers there? And I think it's about time for you to reconsider what you are posting in the social media. A very good example perhaps is, for example, you, you just had a picture and then on the background, there is a document that can be seen. Now, what is that document? That document might be your passport, your birth certificate that will give others an idea of who you are and give others access to your personal information. So you need to be careful of this. Okay? We will continue the discussion on this and the succeeding opportunities.